Page 23, the house of the rising sun. Three, four times, got one sharp. So it's either in G major or E minor. And those are the two key signatures with one sharp. Look at the end. The last couple measures, you're here. That's an E minor chord, so I guess it's an E minor. Of course, they kind of give it away on the previous page where they talk to you about E minor. This would be a good time to, if you haven't, go do my scale video on E minor. Learn the scale one octave up and down, the beginner part. You should be doing the C major, the A minor, and the G major so far. You should know those scales, one octave up and down, in my opinion. Add the G minor to it. It will help you. I want to talk about house. This house. Pick up beat in the right hand. We'll come in on beat three. See here? You have a three dice one fingering. Play it with third finger and substitute the thumb for it. This way we're ready to go on. And when you do these finger substitutions, do them immediately. And then the counting. Three, one and two and three and one and two and three. See, that may not be the rhythm you're used to. Second line, reach up. It's an octave. So forth. Then the third line, the first note is with, you're carrying it over a second finger from the previous line, and then fifth finger. And you're back to what you were doing. Then the last line, the first note's with thumb. That's carried over, tied from the previous line, thumb, and then fifth finger. And then you're going down, see the RH, they're telling you to play it with right hand. The fact the stems are going up there tells you to play it with right hand too. And then fourth finger, and then thumb, and then there's a line that's telling you, actually, it's supposed to point out the melody, but it's, it's right hand, just, and it's two five there, here. Because that's the actual chord, we're not using the B, it's just, that's where you are. So you got to get out of the way because the left hand is going to need that note, so get out of the way. Right hand has the broken chords. Move it around a little bit, just crawling around like a bug. And I'm playing all legato, everything here. Watch the, the sharps, they got off all of them and so forth. Last line, you're down here. that connected. If you can't, then you have to, you'll have to come down. Like so. so the left hand is all legato, but in the right hand you want to lift up between the slurs. Here. Lift up. Just the right hand, not the left. dynamics, medium loud for the right hand. Keep the left hand soft. And at the end, the last line, you're going to get softer gradually to the last chord there is very soft. So the last line here. Softer, softer, softer. And now you're used to soft, you can hardly hear it. Don't use the soft pedal, that's cheating. You do it with the hands. I tend to want to retard there. It's a personal thing. If you, It has a repeat sign, so you'd play it twice. So if you're going to retard, I recommend you hold the retard on though until the second time and just retard at the very end of it. There's a note at the top. Now when you repeat it, the second time they want both hands 8VA. So you just pretend middle C just goes up an octave and you, everything instead of here, you're just up here. So the second time everything, the whole thing's going to be there. See if they didn't have both hands, then it would only be the right hand would be going. And the left hand would stay where it is. But because they put in both hands, 
then both hands come up. Hmm? Andante Moderato on the slower side of Andante uh, Moderato was about as fast as I think I've been playing it. One, two, three. It's the flow of the piece that has to feel that. Not necessarily the beat, it's the flow has to feel that. The fermata at the end, I'm going to hold six counts instead of three because I'm going to do this with a metronome. Now they've added pedal, it's legato pedal throughout. I'd still like to hear the phrasing, but we'll see. You don't, I mean, you don't have to hear the phrasing, it's just it's nice in some cases. I'm going to push the notes down first and then the pedal. And when I change the pedal, out of each measure, I'm going to play the notes first and then change the pedal. measures are the same pedal and then at the end before you repeat you can lift up because you don't pedal the pickup beat like so at the top between the stabs you have the MF for the dynamic and then the word legato it's telling you legato means connected they're telling you connect because if they don't tell you anything it's really up to you and how your interpretive powers how you want to play it so when they tell you legato, now you're limited. Now, now you got to play legato. I mean, you'd probably play legato anyway, but the point is, if they don't tell you anything, you can do pretty much anything you want. As long as you don't violate what the music's telling you to do, you can do what you want. But legato means legato, so we'll connect it. Of course, the pedal's going to connect it anyway. But Even though you're using pedal, you'd still lift up in the phrasing in the right hand as though you were going to hear a silence, you just don't hear the silence. In other words, just because you're using pedal doesn't mean you change the technique. You still use the technique you would use. This is one of the reasons we learn these pieces without pedal first, so we can hear exactly what it sounds like with just the hands. So when you add pedal, you can hear clearly the difference the pedal makes. So I'm going to give us two counts because we come in on B3. Let's play this together slowly. Ready, go. to 